Michael Clayton. I go by Prop Clayton over all the internet. So if you just do PropClayton.com or just the hack, or just at me, at Prop Clayton on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. It all goes back to me. In real life, I'm an actual graphic design professor uh, at a small private Catholic university in South Texas. Um, I've been teaching for 18 years now, and uh, I've been sketch noting for probably the last, I don't know, 40 years of my life. I just didn't know what it was called until 2012. Um, <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of background uh, on me, is yes, I am a graphic designer. Yes, I have an MFA in graphic design from Utah State University. I am a trained graphic designer, trained professor. I am a professional. And please, what I talk about today, do this at home. Okay. You know how they Because guess what? All those degrees, all those hours working, doesn't mean anything when it comes to sketch notes. I was joking last night with Eric and with Mario and with Luis. We were doing the urban sketching. I have 24 credit hours of undergraduate drawing. I should be able to sit out there and do good. So when you take a look at my stuff, of course it's going to look good. If it doesn't, I'm not doing my job. And I can talk over. I live right by an airport. I never hear a plane go over, so I'm just going to talk like there's nothing there. And can you hear me in the back, okay, Lorraine? Yes. All right. Oh. Now, as a professor, <laughs> as a professor, my classes are three hours long twice a week. So if we don't get out of here until seven o'clock, it's totally cool. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're going to boil before we ever leave. So I came to this conference intent on talking about something else. But after talking to a few people here, I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch gears a little bit. And I kind of picked the last slot on the last day for a reason. Because I want you guys to walk away either saying, one, wow, all the talks are better than his. Or number two, I'm going to give you some food for thought for, for taking home with you, to have you think of a few things. And I hope you chew on it until we meet again. Or you roast me on Twitter, or whatever you do. Okay? Because I have been teaching sketch noting at a university level for six years now, almost seven. I've been teaching graphic design for nearly 20. I have seen good projects and bad projects. I've seen great sketch notes that are beautiful. I've also seen beautiful sketch notes that have no content whatsoever. It's like a polar bear in a prom dress. Why would you ever want to do that, right? But then again, I have seen some of the ugliest sketch notes have some of the most beautiful content. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Everything is beautiful. The search for the ugly sketch note. Bear with me on this. Let's define beautiful for a second. Okay? I want you to think in your head, what do you think of as beautiful? Just whatever one word pops up to your head, when I point at you, give me that word. What word do you think I'm going to give you? What's beautiful to you? The ocean. Hmm? The ocean. The ocean. What about you, Eric? My wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Well, one second. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think beautiful is? The sun. Hmm? Flowers? My kids. Your kids? By you, sir. <laughs> okay. Beautiful has a lot of connotations. Beautiful can be an outward appearance, right? And they can also be an inward appearance. Well, people can be beautiful when they're on the outside, right? We talk about a man named John Merrick. Have you ever heard of him before? The Elephant Man. A totally disfigured on the outside, but such a wonderful person on the inside. But nothing, no one could look past his outside to see what he had inside. I like what Maro talked about earlier today when he's talking about sketch notes. So many times he just flips through sketch notes that are beautiful and doesn't really do a deep dive into it. But then he started looking. And Maro, can you back me up? Are there some ugly sketch notes with fantastic content? Yeah. It's called Everything My Students Do in the First Three Weeks. 
No. But on the, on the other side, let's talk about ugly. What defines ugly? Now, we could go on forever, right? But someone will just hold their hand up and say, ugly is the opposite of beautiful. <laughs> Can things be ugly on the outside? Can they be ugly on the inside? Yes. We have a word in English called vapid. I'm not sure what the word translates, but vapid means empty, or there's nothing there. There are many times I've seen sketch notes where there's nothing there. Let me jump to another point. This man's name is Michael Beirut. <laughs> Michael Beirut is one of the partners of a design firm in New York called Pentagram. Okay? Michael Beirut is a partner at a design firm called Pentagram. Does a lot of beautiful design work. But you want to know what? That's a sketch. Right? Yep. A sketch is nothing more than an idea. We take a sketch and we put that down on paper as quickly as we can. When he and his team work on a branding exercise to give a company a logo, they spend weeks and weeks and weeks doing sketches. Are these ugly? Are they fast? Are they quick? Do they illustrate the point? Take a look at this next page. This is something out of this sketchbook as well. Is it quick? Is it readable? Is it to the point? It communicates. Now, if I take that, this right here, these ideas, ended up in this poster. So this is not a sketch, is it? This is a finished poster. Approved by the higher-ups, run through a press, and hung all over New York. I am, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the definition between what is a sketch and what is something that's really polished and, and ready to go. Here's another page of the sketchbook. Sat down and created this logo for Hillary Clinton in her campaign in 2016. He and his team put simple things together. This is an H and an arrow. How many of you guys, how many people here can draw an H? Who can draw an arrow? Then why did he get paid millions of dollars for this? <laughs> right? But this idea turned into that. And that turned into this. So not only can sketches lead to big ideas, they can lead, lead to even a bigger variety of ideas. Now this right here, this is beautiful. It is well thought out, well designed, whether or not you politically agree with the person that it stands for, you can look at it subjectively and take a look at it and say, yes, that is very nicely put together. The widths are all the same, the arrow has the same angles on the side. It's not screwed up like some of the sketches could be. Oh, whoops, back one, there we go. What about this? Who thinks this is beautiful? Yeah. I love coming. This is my seventh trip, sixth trip to the earth. And I've been to many museums. I've seen many beautiful things. This is an artist's rendering of a classical statue. Anybody know who this is? Hold on a second. Let me get down to something. This is by the same artist doing a caricature of his father. Now, you can see the difference between the classically trained pencil work in the first drawing to the nuanced characteristics and caricature of this one. Are they both beautiful? Are they both like done different ways? Let me go ahead and go one more. How about this? Is this more of a sketch? It's a line drawing? Simplified? Not as realistic as the statue. Not as caricatured as the last drawing, but it's simple, isn't it? Now, I'm going to give this all away. This is all the same artist. <coughs> this is Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso is a classically trained artist. 
he can draw anything. And because he can draw anything, he has gone through his life and simplified things down to its characteristics. He simplified things down to line. Oh, whoops. Have the back. There you go. Sorry. That, was, that last one wasn't a moment. This one's a moment. <laughs> but you can see how it's just the features. It's just the outline. And then he went through and did the study on the bowl. And he started with a very realistic bowl. And he went down to here. How many of you can draw this? Don't be shy. If you can, raise your hand, right? It's okay. All right? Who can do this? I mean, well, yeah, Picasso, you know. But the thing is, it's simplified. It's something we can do. Is there beauty in that first drawing? Is there beauty in this last drawing? But it's different quality of beauty. So I'm going to make a jump here. Uh, it's a lot of updating on my phone. I'm just seeing it over there. Let me try this again. Uh, there we go. All right. This is where I am. Three years ago, I visited my brother in Madrid, Spain. He worked for the United States Embassy, and he took me to the Renaissance And I got to go in there, and I got to stand in front of this massive, massive painting. Who has seen this? Or, or a facsimile in real life, the size that it is. It's amazing. As I stood there, I heard people come in and go, oh, that's big. And then walk out. I was like, stop, look at it. It's got some good stuff there. Right? Now, uh, this is just, could this be a sketch note? Does this tell a story? Yeah, it does. There's no words. But if we did, we could go through and put some words in and we could play them because this tells a story about a famous event in history. Okay? So it's just interesting, as I go through and I study art and I take a look at things, I can find beauty just about everything. Can I, give, can I let you guys in on a little secret? I don't like Pablo Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> but I respect his work because I know where he's coming from and know what he does. There's just like a lot of people in this world I don't like, but I can respect them because of what they've accomplished. What they've done. But he is a prime example of someone who can cross the spectrum and do beautiful things and do things that people might deem ugly, but there's still some beauty inside. Right? Okay. So now, let's go ahead and talk about the thing we're all here for. Sketch notes. Right? Sketch notes. A simple idea. It's sketch plus notes. Right? And now we've defined what a sketch is, right? Okay? It's a sketch plus notes. What are notes? Text. Ideas, words, different things. When you were a kid, you took notes. You didn't know what a sketch note was. You didn't know what an image was. You didn't know what text was. You just put things on the paper and, and started to move forward, right? And as you got older, hopefully you learned how to take better notes, right? So we call them sketch notes, not nice drawing notes, right? That wouldn't fit on the book, right? The nice drawing notes handbook doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it, Mr. Rody? <laughs> and then again, if I could go a little bit further, it's also not perfectly rendered notes. <laughs> right? Who here has wonderful handwriting? Uh, who here gets, gets pointed out for having good handwriting? Who is hated by people because of good handwriting? <laughs> 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 okay, so, yeah, the thing is it's not perfectly rendered notes. It's not supposed to be. The essence of it is a sketch note. So let's go back to sketch. So my idea here today is to put the sketch back in sketch notes. Now, nothing against people who go through and do it finely rendered and might use a digital lab to make sure it's perfect and other things like that. Good for you. Because for me, I don't have the time to go back and redo it nor the desire, most often times. Marl and I have long conversations about one and done, <laughs> which we'll talk about in a little bit. But then I want to ask the question is, why are you worried? When you, put your, when you put your sketch notes on social media, whether Instagram, or Facebook, or Twitter, or whatever have you, if they are sketches 
but notes in sketch form. It's our ideas, right? Because we all know these three words. Ideas, not art. Right? Ideas, not art. So since when, since when did sketch notes become about art? How many people in here, when they look at sketch notes of other people, get so caught up in how they look that they don't go into what they are about and read them? Yeah. How many of you guys skip over notes you think that are sloppy? Because it might not be worth your time to figure something out. Yeah, right. Okay. I'm just, I was, as I sat through Marlowe's talk over I'm like, this is just forcing everything home that I'm talking about today. Because it's a process. We have to find out what's beautiful to us. And beauty has many different kinds of attributes. I like to think of someone's sketch note as a seed. Right? We all started sketchnoting at one point. Who here is only started sketchnoting three months ago? Six months ago. So you're free. Yesterday. Yes, <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> How many of you guys, I want you to think about where you were at from here to here. <laughs> Dirt yet, right? <laughs> it's just, but hey, that's what we're coming here. That's when the root starts popping out, right? The good thing about this is, and this kind of um, was driven home a little bit earlier, is we gotta, we can be a seed, but unless we plant that seed, that seed can be nothing more than bird food, right? But when that seed is put into the dirt and it grows and it takes time. It takes water, it takes sunlight, it takes nutrients. So when we take our sketch notes and put them online, that's like putting them in the dirt. When we show them to our friends, that's putting it in the dirt. When we hang it on the wall at work, we're putting it in the dirt. When it's scanned and sent out to your colleagues as meeting notes, it's taken out of the trash and put in the dirt. Okay? How many of you guys are in this phase right now? You're sprouting a little bit, you're starting to break through, you're starting to understand, and then you break through and then you start to come a little sapling. Who's here? Who's here? Who's here? You know where I am? I think I'm right about here. Now, I'm not saying that to, to make anyone feel bad, but my progressions keep them going. I can still learn, I can still grow. I may be right here, but I see myself as right here. But the thing is, if we go back and take a look at that mantra before, it's ideas, not art. So I'm going to throw some pears at you. P-A-I-R-S. Not the fruit, but the coupling of things. We talk about mediums, right? Are you... Oops, sorry. Are you analog or digital? Do you put pen to paper or do you put stylus to tablet? Oh, yeah. I'm an analog person. I, I moonlight as a digital guy. But, you know, I, I, I like the, you know, one of these days when I get a nice iPad cover that really has that tooth, I may switch over. I want an iPad so I can sharpen. I'm sorry, that's just. <laughs> I had a kid sharp and I that's there. You want to talk about that? Um, I told you better to be sharp and fly pencil. It was his skills, not the pencil itself. Be very careful when you talk to kids. <laughs> the practice. Think about the practice. One and done or a two timer? A one and done is someone who captures the sketch note live in the moment and leaves it. Kind of, it's a kind of a cavalier attitude. I'm a knight, I've run off to rescue the fair maiden, she's rescued, on to the next one. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't hang around like, hey babe, I just rescued you, let's, let's do this again. You know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you can see where I'm coming from, right? <clears throat> I can do twice as many sketch notes as a two-timer. Right? I don't know. It's, 
But we have conversations about this. Number three, drawing talent. We lump ourselves into two categories. Got it versus don't got it. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Third one versus the don't ask me. I'll punch you. Okay? Ability. Now, ability is a little bit different. Confident versus fearful. I have the ability to take good notes. I have the ability to capture ideas and put them on the page. I have the ability to understand the things that I put down. Or, man, I'm not sure I can draw that. I'm not sure I can write that. I'm not sure that I, I, I've got the capacity to understand that. Are you guys starting to put yourselves into these categories as we're bouncing down the list? Audience. <clears throat> I did try to know I forgot that I grounded my kids for video games a week and a half ago, and they're just asking me if it's okay to start playing again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll text them after this. Thing. I'll let them wait. Okay. Okay. So, it, it comes down to audience. Is the sketch note for you? Is the sketch note something you're taking down personally for a class, for a journal? at church? Is it just for you? Or are you giving a sketch note for the audience? Are you making an explainer? Are you giving a travel log? Are you making some sort of policy announcement for your corporate, you know? They have different audiences. Purpose. I know you're thinking, what's he throwing purpose up here for? Important versus casual. How many of you guys have the need or you feel the purpose to make a sketch note? Rob said in the session before this, you don't have to sketch note everything. Don't feel you have to be obligated to sketch note every little thing. I sat down with a notebook in my wife one night. She says, you're not sketch noting this conversation, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, hold on a second. <laughs> No. <laughs> or is it casual? Are you just doing it for fun? Are you doing it for practice? You know, it's, it's almost like sketch note, like no one's watching. Right? It's kind of like the dances we did on Thursday night, right? Like yeah. Do you do it? Do you do it for fun? I sketch note for fun. I'm sorry. It's exciting. I'm like, this is so great. And people just look at me like, what's he doing? But then, oh, sorry. I gotta look all these again. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Okay, it said, which are you? <laughs> so as you go down, as you go down through this, um, I want you to think about which categories you go into and how you and how you feel on, on those things. A very wise man once told me and my class, practice makes better. Perfect is DNA. Mario Ticelli, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> He's got my, my sketch note in class. It was at 4.30 in the afternoon. And with the time difference, it was 11.30 at night. And he stayed up for an hour and talked to my students. And he shared this piece of advice. And this was around week four of the class that we, that we spoke. And that actually broke the ice for a lot of students. Practice makes better, not perfect. Perfect is DNA. In your DNA, you have skills and abilities to do certain things. I am in the camp that everything can be taught. It might take a while. It may never be to Olympic athletic status. But things can be taught. People can be taught how to draw. People can be taught how to listen. People can be taught how to think. Do you agree? Absolutely. You just like seeing the thing. <laughs> so, now we're going to talk about my class. As some of you who attended the, the sketch note uh, camp in Hamburg last year, I spoke about my style. 
In 2016, from May until the next January, I had no class responsibilities. I had no department chore responsibilities. I stayed at my house and watched Netflix all day. No. Um, I sketch noted watching Netflix. No, I, I sketch noted my brains out. I talked to people all around the world. I gathered resources. I gathered information because I had two goals on my sabbatical. One, to lay the groundwork for five years of research into visual note taking and visual practice that will culminate in a book that will come out in the next year and a half or so. And the second thing was to develop a class to be taught at the university level <laughs> to anyone on campus who wanted to take it. And so here's the inaugural group. I had 12 students sign up for the first class. Now, it goes further back here. It's all like to the back. To the front. <laughs> but we sat and we sketch noted for an hour and a half, twice a week. So it was 40 hours of instruction over the course of these 15 weeks that we got to go through. We got to deep dive. Most workshops you guys take are maybe, what, two to four hours? Imagine doing that 10 times over. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. These are, the, these are the books I pulled information from. Mike's two books, the handbook and the workbook. Nadine wrote a sketch notebook. Who has this one? It's in German. But I have an iPad set on a stand with Google Translate and those very bad translations that turn the page to read. <laughs> but the information is wonderful. I also use Marcelli's 100 Plus to show students that they can draw anything, even several kinds of alcoholic beverage containers. <laughs> College kids love those ones. Like, I can draw beer, it's easy. <laughs> But I also use a book called How to Draw Type and Influence People. This is a workbook that goes through and gives you exercises on how to draw different typefaces and put them into certain uh, scenarios and different things like that. And it's a workbook. They want you, it's thick paper, they want you to draw on it. It's really quite awesome. Okay? In the class, they do over 50 sketch notes. Okay? We have a lot of time. We can do a lot of stuff. We do them in class, we do them outside the class. We do them all over the place. We have five to six special guests call in every semester, talk to the students, critique their work. Here's an example, there's Lotto, talking to our students. And this is a sample of some of the sketch notes that came out of that session. <laughs> They all have different drawing abilities. They all were different levels in college. But the information in them was beautiful. It was really great to see what they could do. But then came the hard point for me. How do I break? Oh. Can I be honest? The first semester that I taught this class, I did it about 90% based on attendance and participation because I didn't know what to do. I mean, I don't want to run to the dean's office. Look, Dr. Welke, he gave me a D for this sketch note. She's going to look at it and go, <laughs> well, you spelled things wrong, and this, is, this doesn't look like a person. You can't. So I was in a conundrum. <laughs> so for that first semester, I basically did it on participation. If they were in class, they were engaged, engaged, they turned in their scope, their sketch notes, and we did 50 of them. If they turned in all 50, great. If they turned in 80%, then you know, I graded them based on that. But as I said, I can see that some students were taking a long time to do them, and some were taking a short time to do them. When I have them sketch note in class, I can observe them and see how long they take. So if I do a 10 minute talk, I give them the 10 minutes of the talk and a few minutes after to finish up. If I gave them a talk to go home to, they would listen to the talk, rewind it, listen to it again, do a draft, rewind it, and then come back with something kind of published. And a student walked in with one, I said, I see your first draft, how could you tell? Like, I've been watching you sketch over the last month and a half, and I know you can't do this in one shot. Oh, is that obvious? 
So I sat there, and, and over the course of that next semester, I only teach this class in the spring semester. So in the fall of 20, uh, in the fall of 2017, I sat there and really took a look at that, what it is. And I had to look at this subjectively and objectively. Because we can break some of those things down into those components. Remember I talked about <coughs> what practice, what, what level of talent. I mean, who in here can find it easy to grade a sketch card? I was really grateful for Morrow's comments earlier because he, in his theory of sketch note, he really started to break it down and see, I'm going to change my rubric. <laughs> because I see the practicality in each one of those things he talked about. Should I grade it on style or content? Is it really fair for me to make a scale of 20 points and say if it's nicely rendered, it's 20, if it's poorly rendered, it's 8? It's an eye of the beholder. When I look at the content, do I have to become a master of the content so that every time I read their sketch note, I know what they left out or what they put in or what they BS? You know? What do we do? How do we do this? Well, as you've heard already today, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? To me, a doodle is worth about ten. Because a doodle is supposed to send an idea very quickly, right? If I see a doodle, oh, that's collaboration. Oh, that is a, a, a notebook. That is a television. That is that. But when I put those doodles together, I can get 20 words, 30 words, different things like that. So like I said, I'm not looking for a big, beautiful picture that's worth a thousand words. I'm looking for bits of information. Because trust me, if I had to read a thousand words for every picture I saw, I'm going to switch to English and just start creating papers. Because that's not what this is supposed to be. <coughs> it's what they're doing simplified. Is what they're doing overreaching? Are they rendering it too well? Are they getting too complicated? Now I know that, like I said, these are some heavy questions to consider. And this is coming from me, an academic, trying to justify how to grade a sketch note. Now I can sit down and grade a website. I can grade a wireframe for an, inter for an interactive site or app. I can sit because those things are kind of predefined. You know, there's something in a professional aspect that goes along with those. But I don't have that same kind of thing with this. And the sad thing I've come to realize is the moment that I do, it doesn't become fun anymore. It becomes work. And who here wants to work when doing a sketch note? I'm saying work in the in the sense of, you know, I want to play. I want to play when I sketch. I want the joy to be there. I don't want a student to walk out of the class going, I'm never doing this again. I have students that walk out of the class saying, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> there are people that probably walk out of here going, I'm never listening to Professor Clayton again. But the thing is, is as we go through and we think about that, I want you to think about these things. Oh, yeah, okay. I made myself a note in the slides. So when we talk about an idea, if I wanted to go through and simply board in, right? I could easily write down that in. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing? Same thing? Yeah. Now, I had to come up with a different idea because I hated drawing Rufus over and over again out of Mike's book. But he talks about how we have good, we have great,
Do we have good enough? Right? How many of you guys draw good? The ideas and symbols you put in your sketch note are good. How many of you guys are great? You sit there, put the extra effort in, you might put a label on the box, this side up, you know, here, things like that. Who does that? Oh, come on, there's a few of you, yeah. Okay. How many of you guys are in the middle? How many of you guys are probably somewhere in here? Depending upon the conversation, the speed, different things like that, right? Okay. So that's always been the kind of, of hard thing to, to go through and then to look at. So that's 20 minutes. So now I'm going to show you some examples. Now the thing about these examples are these examples are in no particular order. And I'm going to show you things just to kind of lead things around. Um, I have my students upload every assignment to Instagram with a hashtag. And the hashtag is Come on back. Come on back. There we go. Now, there we go. Let's go back to this. Where are you at? I'm going to. Now, if you go to Instagram, which I'm going to do here in a little bit. The hashtag is G D S N four three nine nine. <laughs> All right. Graphic design course forty nine forty three ninety nine sketch note. It's our special topics class, so that's why I, I had to I had to put that in there. So let me kick over here. Let me mirror my screen. first 
and you capture nuggets of information, and then you go in and you add a hierarchy, you make some of the more important words bigger or give emphasis to them, and then you go through and you start to add a little more hierarchy. You go through and you start to put in the flow or you wanna put pads in, connectors to go to different ideas. And then the last thing you do is go back and add icons and images. You know, so we take them through different processes. I've got a half a dozen or a dozen and a half strategies on how to make your sketch notes better. I'm saving that to the book. So in 2019, when it comes out, you guys can buy that and figure out what those things are. But the thing is, is as you go through and take a look at these, you can decide which ones are great and which ones aren't. You look at something like this. Does that look nicely rendered? Good handwriting? You think they captured a lot of content? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of words in here. Whether the words could be simplified into other things, I don't quite know. <clears throat> Is it okay for me to put this one side by side with another classmate and see who did it better? Would you like to have your, so all the sketch notes that are done in this session that are uploaded, I'm gonna put them side by side and start great notes. <laughs> but the thing is, is how many of you guys this week have looked at your social media accounts and seen different renderings of different sessions and thought, oh wow, those are better than mine. Or, oh wow, I did better than that. <laughs> right, it's honest, right? We, we, we try to get those, those things in there. So let me go ahead and um, show you a couple of things. Let me bring email back up. At the end of the semester, I asked them to go back and take a sketch of what they had done and photograph it in context to see if it would change the sketch note into something a little bit better. So we had them do a sketch note where they had to uh, do an experience during the weekend. And so she talked about when her boyfriend Curtis came back and how they spent the weekend. And they went to Bay the Rain and got some croissants and some coffee. And then they went to get some stuff at the zoo and got a unicorn cow thing. And then they saw the flamingos. The bears were asleep. And you go up here, and you want to see the fish, the reptiles, and she had birds on her, and they went and got sushi and went home. Is this nice? Is the outside better to make it look like it's in context? Does it change the message of the inside? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It can, but it shouldn't. Here's another one. <laughs> right, how to make Polano grapes. All right, we're all hungry, aren't we? At the end of the day. Is this a good sketch note? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good enough, right? Everything's there. It's almost like upstairs, Lorraine was talking about a, a culinary class that did a sketch note based on a recipe. They had to turn those in. Then when they came back to the next class, their recipe books were taken away. They were given a sketch note, and they had to go through and make the same thing. And there were some disasters. Right, Lorraine? There were. <laughs> yeah, because they didn't put in the thing on how to melt the butter, what temperature consistency. They didn't put mix these things together in this thing. They went and just kind of lazily went through and put stuff in. This is one of those where it was lazily kind of putting stuff in. They went through and said, here's the ingredients. And there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. So can you see how I can start looking at sketch notes objectively? Not based on the subject, but based on both how they're put together and what the content is. Yes, Rob? Um, not to throw a fly in the open here, but one of the fundamental criteria that I have is does this artifact make meaning for me? So, are you able somehow to sum it up the process to get to the heart of that, that that makes meaning for that individual? So this is where I have to disassociate myself from the person. This person, when they took the class, was a junior. The student is lazy, turns things in late, doesn't come to class on time, 
is on her phone all the time and misses details. Now that's just my observation over three years of having this student. So having that prior knowledge, when I look at this, could I look at this as maybe kind of, maybe last minute and lazy and not quite getting to where I needed to be? It's hard, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I agree. That does not look last minute to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But, I mean, and there again, I, I there in lies the problem. Yes. Well, and now I have a problem. Part of the sketch note thing is it meaning for yourself, right? Yeah. The meaning for her is I want to get this done and turn it in and hope Clayton doesn't think I didn't do it right. Okay. You know, but again, that's kind of. Yeah, <laughs> but, and the thing is, is we always bring our prior experience to the table when looking at things, right? right. Uh, for those who are in the rain session, the word I wrote down was isomorphic correspondence, which means the meaning that we put into stuff based on our prior experiences. You didn't know that? Um, <laughs> I'm glad you picked that word out. Everyone got to look at those uh, so what, <laughs> what about this one? A spinach salad. There's the salad. There it is rendered here. It's not drawn very well. It's drawn very sketchy, very quick. But it's got the ingredients listed around as they go through and put that in. Now it's not, you can't ruin a salad very easy. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is going back to this person, this is their style, how they draw. This is how they write. So now I have to look past that, look at the content, make sure the content is, is correct. Now, Yes, does it mean something to them? Yeah, this person tries their hardest. And I know that this took them a little while. But there lies the problem. How, how do you know? I mean, because I know the students for three years, and I know how they work, I know how they act, I know within my classroom. Let's say you're grading the students, not the session. Yeah, and that's the problem. Because if uh, the students is uh, very quick, uh, it's okay as well. And uh, one of the I was managing the project manager and one of the project manager, everything was done very quickly. When I had a subject, yeah, hey, it's easy, it was uh, a yeah. But in fact, it was perfect. It, it was just so easy for him, you know. I asked him to Yeah, it took me a while to. What do you mean? What do you mean? Yes. Did you try a way that you didn't see the name or something like that? I have. I'm wondering if you are. If I'm entering personal bias yes. into, the, into the equation. Okay. Yes, and the thing is, is, even if they didn't put their name on it, I know their style. And that's where the trick comes up. Yes? Um, I wanted to add to the personal value thing because um, I think the idea with like recipes is a good example because. I also did like sketching of recipes, put them out, and I had people like asking uh, back, like, but what did you do with that? And how do you put that in there? And I think, okay, I missed that, but I don't, because that's an information which is, when I'm baking, obvious for me. I don't have to put that in that sketch note. I don't have to write that I have to heat the oven 20 minutes before I have to put something in there. I just know. Because of that, I don't put it in the sketch note. And maybe I also uh, miss some details I don't need. But if another person who don't know anything about baking would bake a cake with my sketch note, uh -huh. it probably would go wrong because there are details missing. But I just know, yeah. which are not important for me. So I think it's true for me as well. Any information depends on the prior yeah. knowledge to receive your text. Yeah. yeah. So, the idea behind this, the sketch of is to take the recipe and turn it into a sketch note. What that implies is all the information in the recipe should be reflected within the sketch note. But the thing is, is now after thinking, this might be better listed as a graphic recording. Would they then be required to put the responsible information within the documents? In the end, no, it depends on the purpose of the sketch. Yeah. If you want to explain the process, you need to put certain information. If it's just for yourself, you're going to put certain details in that. Yeah. It's important to you, but you don't care for the others. So, can you see why I just did it based on participation? If they did it or not. <laughs> okay? Because it becomes really hard to quant to qualify. Quantifying is easy. Here's another one. You did a sketch of Transformers the movie. 
<laughs> and he brought Unicron in, and Unicron's actually seeing he's gonna die at the end. You know, it's just it's like This was a 30-day challenge. Every day for 30 days, they had to pick a topic and do something based on tomorrow. And, and this young man, he said, I am going to only sketch out a good news story every day. I'm going to look on the eighth page of the paper and pull something good out and sketch out about it. Drawing ability? Good enough. You know, that's a car, that's an engine having problems. Here's the reason the guy goes through and helps these people out. Yeah. Um, that, I'm going to bring that one up in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you. This is something from, from upstairs. When we talk about students applying the sketch noting in an elementary phase, these are second graders that are drawing about biospheres, and here they're talking about the urban biome. And they're talking about transportation, buildings, people, and recreation. It's fantastic. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is beautiful. This has information in there. The public schools. Um, I don't know if MC Escher has a brother named uh, MC Donald. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure what a, what a museum is, or if Starbucks is another firm or something. I didn't know this. Starbucks is in the Empire State Building. <laughs> but the thing is, is, does the student understand what they're putting here? Can I look at that? Wow. Population, recreation, buildings, transportation. Man, I just want to teach kids. <laughs> Kids get it. Adults are some of the worst ones to teach sketch noting to. Holy crap. <laughs> Isn't that just the best? I love this people. You know, you sit there and then let's jump up to third grade. And here's the here's the rainforest. Again, adaptations. Then we have the canopy and we have other things that are through here. This is amazing. They're yes. ugly as crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> Third graders can no, 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 no. Third graders can draw with the ability they have. I see confidence here. I see ability. I see a purpose. There's an intent for this. It's not casual. <laughs> Typography. <laughs> I would fail them right out of the box. <laughs> but the thing is, is I've learned in my research and my study to look at sketch notes as if through a child's eyes. I have to look for the innocence that's there. I have to look for the intent. A third grader is not going to put any misintent or malintent into the sketch note. They're going to put truth in there. The sketch note is truth as perceived by the individual making it. So now when I go through, I break down those categories. <coughs> Do they have the confidence? Do they have the fear? But the thing about fear is fear leads to courage. Confidence leads to a big head, right? They do through fear, and how they put that through You know, I can sit there and let me go to the other one here. No, where's that?
But anyway, let me So I don't have my students uh, I don't have my students uh, use, a, use a sketchbook for the first uh, four weeks of class. Everything is done on uh, 9 by 12 paper over a template to show the outline of what a moleskin size would be. And then they, I do this, it's easier for me to scan, it's easier for me to collect. They can keep their books and different things like that. And you can see two different sketch notes here. Gaber told these five dangerous things you should let your kids do. I have over 100 examples of this. But I can go here and take a look at and see what they see what they have. Over here, Steve Jobs, Stanford University's commencement address. And I can put these side by side by side. And in a link that I will provide you through Twitter, you're gonna be able to go in and see about 10 side by side by side. And I want you to go through. And I want you to kind of not rate them, but take a look at them. Because then down at the bottom, there's gonna be a thing saying, which of these do you like the best? Which one do you, you know, just to kind of get some information back from y'all. But you can see that as this student went through, they started to find a structure. And yes, this student actually has some ability. And then we started doing things where we did do a second draft. Here's the first draft, now go back and redo a second one. You know, yeah. Sadly, the student dropped out after a year because of financial reasons. <laughs> but she's happy and healthy, has a job in illustration at a firm, so it's, it's not that bad. But then, if I go through and show you someone like this. Now everyone's doing this now, right? Drawings, are they good enough? Is the text rendered okay? This kid's a painter. He's not a drawer. And so when he goes through and does things, it has that kind of vibe to it. But if I go through, You know, as I get more students into the class and I look at more sketch notes and I have more things across my desk, I am opened up to looking at lots of different things and seeing lots of different styles. As a researcher and as an academic, I'm sorry to say, but I spend about 10 hours on social media week researching <laughs> social media and sketch notes within social media. I have a folder on my server at home for just about probably a third of the people in here. And whenever you post something, I drag it off and stick it in a folder. And you? Huh? And you? Yeah. Why don't you Huh? Why don't you go to What? Why don't you go to Oh, no, I, I just go through and I'm like, I just drag it out into the folder, drag it out, drag it out, drag it out. Or I take screenshots, you know. And I've been doing that for about five years now. So I've actually watched Rob get better over the last couple of years. <laughs> and it's awesome. I love it. I've seen Maro get better over the last four years. I've seen I've seen Mike Brody get better over the last six years. If you go back, I have samples of his stuff from 2009 and 2010. And there is a polish, there is an understanding, there is a Zen master. It's almost like when a kid is starting out in the martial arts. They're punching and kicking and it's sloppy. But I would not want to meet Mr. Rody in a dark alley. <laughs> but the thing is, is observe that. Look at it from a different point of view. Like I said, everything is beautiful. Everything my kids bring home, I put on the fridge. Because I want to be that supportive person. I will go through online and I will like your image. 
but if I have something wrong with it or something I think that, I always give a negative and a positive, right? We always have to balance them out. I will go through and do that. My students had to go to the Sketch Note Army podcast, pick a person, do the Sketch Note based on that podcast, and tag the person in that podcast. So a student did one on Rob and tagged him, and Rob wrote back and gave them some very positive advice. They came back the next class. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Rob liked it. Look, it's that right there. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm gonna do Ava Lot of Lambs one. She wrote me back. She even DM'd me to her email address and said if I had any questions, wanted to show her stuff offline, she could ask me. We're human, we're people, we're sketch numbers. We can share, we can build up, we can go through and we can discover what it takes to have a certain theory of what a sketch note should be. We can look to kids and pull that innocence out. I can watch students evolve over the course of a semester and get a whole lot better. I can see some students get a whole lot worse. I can see students go from putting in too much information to too little information. There are so many things in there. The last semester when I graded it, I actually had them self-grade. Hey, if a sketch note is supposed to be something you did, why not have them reflect upon that experience and give themselves a grade? Now the hotheads always give themselves an A regardless of anything. But it is one of those things. So I would implore you, let's have a discussion about how to quantify, how to qualify. Maybe there is nothing there. Go download uh, Morrow's first part of his theory of sketch note. See what things appeal that. Because now I'm going back and I'm going to come up with a little rubric that runs through some of those things mixed with mine. And I'm going to share that with the community. I've got a website that's going to launch early 2019 that'll be a companion to things I'm working on. So watch Twitter and stuff like that. I'm not going to be dealing with it yet. But we're going to have some things on there. There's going to be, it's set up like it's a, like it's a land, a city. And if you want to do academic stuff, put it on the school. If you want to see a gallery of things, put it on the museum. If you want to go play, put it on the park. If you want to watch some movies about sketch notes, put it on the theater. It's built in that kind of sketch note land kind of idea and concept. Come to the school. Share with me your information. Let me know what you think a good sketch note is. Because as we talked about, there is beauty in everything. Why can't we have, so I want to see an ugly sketch note. I want to see purity. I want to see the truth. I want to see what's in there. I want to see that internalness come out. That's my handle on everything. That's my website that leads to my handle on everything. I am a web designer by trade, but like the cobbler's kids have no shoes, I have no website. <laughs> but if you're one to just write me, because somewhere within that 10 hours of research a week, I'll answer you back. Uh, thank you for your time. Really quick, I'm going to take three questions. Yes. Do you go over with the difference between an infogram and a schedule? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other, you know, because an infographic is based on truth. An infographic has a certain hierarchy based on quantifiable facts that come in, and they have an entire class on information graphics and info design and things like that. So a sketch of you can be easily misread as an infographic as opposed to a sketch of Yes. Okay. And as I've talked to people before, there are sketch notes that can be misconstrued as graphic recordings and backwards reports. So labeling is something we have to work on. I think this is a important distinction. Any kind of criteria by which you evaluate the quality of any sketch. Yeah. There's been a time I was in a conference giving a talk about a sketch note. Someone came back and said, "No, your calculation was wrong. That's the answer." And I was wrong. And I was like, "Run that back and killed that and put it back up with the correct answer." All right. Question number two. All right. So here's. Here's what I'm going to do. Who took a sketch note uh, today? I'm going to turn the lights back on. I want you to take a picture, upload it with a hashtag, and I'm going to go through and take a look at them. 
because in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to find the one that is my favorite. And I'll leave it as objectively. I have a red holster for the person that has the ugliest. Sketch note. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you want to hashtag with ugly sketch out, go ahead and put that on there. Okay? You guys have um, at, at, uh, in seven minutes, I'll make a choice. I know, homework after school, that's just perfect. Yes. Uh, Instagram or Twitter? Just, just you. Just tag me. That's the same on both Instagram and Twitter. Like I said, LinkedIn, Facebook. Flickr, whatever, always there, Tumblr.